بچوں کو عطا کرنی اصغر کا تباسوں پوڑوں کو حبیب ابن مظاہر کی نظر دے کم سن کو ملے پل علی اکبر کا جگر دے ماں کو سکھا سانی یہ زہرا کا سلیتا بہنوں کو سکینہ کی دعاوں کا اثر جو چادرے زینب کی ازادار مولا محفوظ رہے ایسی قواتین کے پردے In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, all praises to Allah, the creator of the universes and their sustainer, the provider of believers and unbelievers. And may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets, the last of his messengers and his holy progeny. Again, grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am with you once again this year and we can proceed with our, our program of discussing the imama of our various imams so that we know them better and that is really the, the, the substance of our discussions so that we come to know our imams alayhim salam better and understand them better appreciate them better well last year we had the good fortune of discussing the imama of the sixth and seventh imams alayhim salam this year the program to carry it forward is to discuss the Imam of the 8th and 9th Imams alayhim as -salam, again on the basis of dividing our 10 nights equally. I did not succeed last year. The effort again will be to succeed this year and give both Imams alayhim as -salam, equal opportunity. Perhaps the 9th Imam alayhi salam needs greater time than the 8th Imam alayhi salam because the 8th Imam alayhi salam is known better than the ninth Imam alayhi salam, but the material that is available in respect of the eighth Imam alayhi salam is so vital in the context of today, particularly, and I do not want to discuss that subject tonight, I've got to start with proof of his Imama, but just to touch on it, particularly that subject which bothers the world today, that is the relationship between the church and the state. So much to learn on that political philosophy. I like to call it political theology insofar as we are concerned in respect of that subject on the relationship between the church and the state. <coughs> but as always, the first subject is proof of his imama. The fact that the imam -Salam, was regarded as a very learned man, there is no doubt about it. The fact that he was regarded as a very pious man, a historical figure, a giant in his time, there is no doubt about it. There is not one historian who has not acknowledged that fact. 
There is not one historian who has not accepted that he was perhaps the most learned of the men of, of the time. And there is no one alim, there is no one scholar who does not accept that at every sitting of the Imam salam, he learned from him. And books of history are filled with those, with those examples. I will not even take your time to say those things because they are so very well known. I propose later on, perhaps on Tuesday night, if time permits, to discuss some of the some of the discussions he had, not with regard to his knowledge, but with regard to us acquiring knowledge from his discussions. Because in the court of Ma'moon, Allah various discussions were held by the monks, the rabbis, the bishops, and so much passed from the Imam salam, that Ma'moon every time said, what more learned man existed ever than his grandfather Ali alayhi salam. But indeed he is a true Ali in the name of the first Ali. And I hope to discuss that also tonight, the questions of the various Ali's alayhi salam. <coughs> so his knowledge is well known, not only that, it is well, it is well established in all history books. Be they, be they Orientalists, be they Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, be, be they the leading books that are accepted in, 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 uh, in, in the Islamic world, all of them unanimously accept that he was perhaps the giant of scholars that ever existed. His son, and I hope we'll discuss that on Thursday night, had to prove that. He started with that, with that basis because he had the time to prove that in his youthhood. But he was always known like that and books are full of that knowledge. Well, I say this tonight because to say that he is the most learned person is not enough. Because as I say, the Christians accept that he was the most learned person at the time. And the Jews accept that. Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah unanimously accept that. Is that enough for us? Certainly not. So long as we do not accept him as an Imam alayhi salam, wajibul ita'a wal farida, one who must be obeyed in everything he says as a word and command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have not known him. And we have not appreciated him. And we have not recognized him. His recognition lies squarely in the acceptance of his wilaya, in acceptance of his governance over us and his guidance over us and that his word is final as that coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not tonight I wanted to discuss this but just to touch something you are so well aware about. When he entered Nishapur, the, the, the hadith you know so well and the historians came out. He did not want to speak. He was in his own, in his own, on his own journey. It is the historians, the scholars really came out and said, Yabna Rasulillah, we want to see your face because he was covered in the, in, 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 on, his, on, on, his, on his ride, on his mount. And we want, to, we want to have a ziyarah, we want to have a sight of you because mere sight of you is ibadah. Mere sight of you can give us Jannah. Indeed, that is the fadila of the ziyarah of an Imam alayhi salam. And I hope that I should discuss tonight time allowing and I hope I will get there and be able to show that mere ziyara of the Imam alayhi salam means Jannah. So they turned around and said, Ya Rasulillah, you can't go away from Dishapur without us having a chance to have a glance of you and learn one hadith from you. And when the whales were lifted and he, he came out to, to, to meet the people, he, he of course could not have just said salam alaikum and go. He gave them hadith, that hadith which is, which is known as hadith of silsilatul dhahab because the, the, the golden chain of narration. He said, I was told by my father al kadhim alayhi salam who was told by his father al sadiq alayhi salam who was told by his father al baqir alayhi salam. This is what I keep always saying. Our greatest pride is that when we name our imams alayhi salam, seriate him, each one has a top quality. Each one has a top quality, one who has no parallel next to him. 
and to be able and he named them Sariyajim Al Kadim alayhi salam who heard from Al Ba from As Sadiq alayhi salam who heard from Al Baqir alayhi salam who heard from Al Sajjad alayhi salam. I have discussed these titles with you, and you will remember each of these titles was given by the by the Holy Prophet himself, peace be upon him and his progeny. And then he goes and he he got the hadith from his father Al Hussein alayhi salam shahid, and he got from his father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, who got from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and who got from Jibril, and Jibril told the Holy Prophet that Allah says. كَلِمَةُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ حِسْنِي مَنْ دَخَلَ وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ أَمِنَ مِنْ أَذَابِي That, that kalima. So vital to become a Muslim. The kalima, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ كَلِمَةُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ حِسْنِي He said, it's my citadel. Allah said, it's my citadel. And whoever enters my citadel is protected from all my punishment. But then, and of course, a number of Sunni books complete the hadith there but our books particularly that of Sheikh Sadduq alayhi rahma on which I rely Ayun uh, Akhbaru Rida alayhi salam he says then his mount moved on a little he paused and after the pause he says and again there are two versions he says walakin bishartiha wa shurutiha but there is a condition and a number of conditions some reporters say he only said walakin bishurutiha but all of them then say wa ana min shurutiha and i am one of those conditions so that kalima la ilaha illallah to take us into the fortress of the protection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not by itself enough it is subject to conditions and the imam alayhi salam says I am one of those conditions meaning if you his if his imama is not accepted by us then that protection is also deprived from us so one can see how vital discussion of the eighth imam alayhi salam is merely us accepting him as a pious man as all ulama of Ahl al sunnah wal Juma, even today accept all of them accept him as a very pious man a very learned man a man of ascetism and i hope i'll touch on that one of these nights <coughs> tomorrow night perhaps his ascetism a vital vital quality of the eighth imam alayhi salam that we cannot omit discussing all that is accepted and is accepted by Ahl al sunnah wal jamaah the sufis will tell you that of whatever denomination they may be i always say that is not enough because walakin bi shurutiha wa ana min shurutiha i am one of those conditions in other words if you let me put it that way i would say that kalima la ilaha illallah is not complete without a rida alayhi salam it goes as a corollary as far as that that to be able to have the full effect and to be able to have the full benefit of that kalima belief acceptance of his imama is vital and i do not have to go far fortunately on on this because i have said this for the last maybe 6 7 years and i will not take your time repeating it i will just remind you and push on we ahl al shia do not accept anybody to be an imam we have specific conditions and we have gone through them in so far as ar rida alayhi salam is concerned he was clearly mentioned by the holy prophet peace be upon him and his progeny i hope i will later on mention that again from sunni sources expressly expressly for him but generally when i say all the 12 have been mentioned by the holy prophet i have cited to you a hadith from sunni sources in particular that hadith in which jabir meets the holy prophet and says who after you and the holy prophet peace be upon him and his progeny you remember gives him all the names jabir says i don't need to know them i will not live long enough the holy prophet says no you will meet them you will meet the fourth you will meet the fifth that is when the title as sajjad was given when he, when he came to the fifth the holy prophet mentions him as al baqir and tells jabir you will meet him and convey my salams 
you remember that hadith which we've already discussed. The Imam alayhi salam then, the Holy Prophet peace be upon him then, proceeds to give all the names and the Imam of the name of Imam Rida alayhi salam is mentioned in it. Yanabiul Mawadda says it. Other other Sunni sources say it, which we have already discussed. So that 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 uh, matter comes flows to us right from right from the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. Do you remember again? We've discussed it. I will just touch on it and move on. When we were discussing the the the, the status of Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi alayha. Do you remember? I said that. One of the things the Holy Prophet said to her as her fadila, as her excellence, is that the Imams السلام, will flow from her progeny and gave her a jafr, that leather skin that we discussed, in which the names were actually written. And the name of Imam Rada السلام, is in that jafr as well. When we were discussing a sadiq السلام, we discussed that jafr once again. So there is ample authority on that. But you will say we discussed three conditions. For an imama which are which are concomitant with his predecessor and then flow to his successor. The three are first that at the time of the shahada of the martyrdom of an imam alayhi salam, the succeeding imam alayhi salam must be the best, the most pious, the most learned, the best of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam who would be living at the time. And that is apparent all. Ulama, and this is we, we, we demand this that ulama should be our scholars should be unanimous on that. There is not one member of the of the and and, and as we saw, Imam Musa Kadim Salawatullahi left a number of children. Yet there was not one who could be comparable to. Imam Rada alayhi salam, in any way, either in knowledge or in piety or in any way whatsoever. There is not one who has been able, as I hope I shall discuss in greater detail at the end of this majlis, inshallah, there was not one who could stand up and match up to the Imam alayhi salam. And I will give more proof of that. But for the time being, I say that and move on. The second condition that we always demand is that the Imam alayhi salam must be a person who in his time must be the most learned we require three things we, he must be most learned person in knowledge he must be the most pious person in his in, in, in his piety and he must be the person to be most appearing most near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all ulama be they of the of the uh, ahl al-sunnah wal jama or ahl al-shuyur the Shias are unanimous on that point that there isn't a person who was who is who is nearer, who was better in knowledge or in piety or in conduct than Imam Rabah alayhi salam. I want to leave that as a sweeping statement tonight, only because we are short of time and I do not want to to, to, to be to, to have to repeat things in the nights to come. In the nights to come, perhaps on Tuesday night, no, Wednesday night, we will be discussing why, why. We will be discussing the Abbasides going to Ma'amun to ask him why he was appointing Imam Rada alayhi salam as his successor. And in that speech, indeed, even in the writing, the, 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 the document by which the appointment was made, Ma'amun sets out a list of the qualities of the Imam alayhi salam. Indeed, when they first confronted Ma'amun, he turns round to them and says, you say that I should not appoint a Rida salam, as my successor. The fear that they expressed was that we Abbasides have got power in our hand. You see, that was the important thing. It was not Tabliq, it was not Islam, it was not propagation of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was power, it was position. We've got power, we got it from the Umayyads. Now, you're passing it back to the, to the, to the Abu Talib's family? They should have power because once a Rida gets it, then it will flow into their family and the Abbasides will lose. We will lose that power. This is a disgraceful blunder that you are making and you just can't do, the, do a thing like this. Mamun's answer to that was, 
show me a person and not amongst only the Abbasites but if you can from the Abbasites show me a person from the Abbasites if you cannot show me a person from the Hashemites which proves my first point this is why I left it there show me a person from the Hashemites and if you can't show me a person from anywhere in the world who is superior to a Rida alayhi salam either in knowledge or in piety and these die-hard enemies of the of the Imam alayhi salam people like Fadl bin Sahal and, and the entire cabinet of, of ministers of Mamun and the generals of Mamun who were all anti-Imam alayhi salam and they always remained anti-Imam alayhi salam even when the Imam was the heir apparent to the Khilafah they could not mention one name of one person who in any one field leave alone generally in any one field was in any way superior to the Imam alayhi salam proof that he was the most learned of the persons a requirement to be an imam proof that he was the most pious of the persons does not come did not come and will not come from his friends it will always come from his enemies his own enemies will said that those who are diehard said true in that respect there is none who can batter him in any way and we say to a Rida alayhi salam today that even today he proves his imama even today I hope I will discuss that make time to discuss that because it's so vital but just to touch on it on this preliminary night that flag that you see flying on his on his dome is the true flag is indeed the true flag that is the flag that determines lots of things even today those who do not believe in him as an imam come to him and say Arida, my son is sick give him shafa the son goes home cured of a sickness the doctors said was terminal even that happens today you alhamdulillah have had the good fortune of going to mashad and may allah make it possible for us all to go to mashad again what greater what greater desire can we have and there is only one place in the world that surpasses surpasses Mashad according to our Rida alayhi salam himself and that is Karbala otherwise Mashad is the place and indeed one sees a variety of people there indeed as you will have seen there is a place kept in the Sahan of Imam Rada alayhi salam so that those who are not Muslims how can I emphasize this more than this? Those who are not Muslims and want to come to us from Imam Rida alayhi salam can stand in the sahan of his courtyard, in, in the courtyard of his haram and ask the Imam alayhi salam to obtain them help from Allah alayhi salam in respect of the difficulties that they have. What greater proof of imama can there be to prove who is nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So all those conditions were fulfilled and finally, third and finally, there must be nas, there must be an appointment by the living Imam alayhi salam of his successor. And our books are full, are full of those examples. Because I must, in order to complete my subject, put forward some examples. I hope I will put forward a few examples tonight. And I have picked them from different circumstances to show how the Imam alayhi salam, that is the seventh Imam alayhi salam, in different circumstances declared Imam Rada alayhi salam to be his true successor. And these I have only picked from, from the leading Shaykhain, Shaykh Mufid alayhi rahmah and Shaykh Sudduq alayhi rahmah. But these examples are in, in all our books. All our books. Indeed. They are even in, 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 in uh, books of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jamaa. I will concentrate on the Shaykhain for the purposes of tonight. <coughs> A number of opportunities on which the Imam alayhi salam seized the chance to say that a Rida alayhi salam is his successor. One opportunity was when Da'ud, Da'ud bin, bin, bin Raqi goes to him and says, Yabn Rasulillah, when I was the when I was the follower of your grandfather a sadiq alayhi salam how lucky were these people to be a follower of three imams alayhi, alayhi, alayhi salam says when i was a follower of a sadiq alayhi salam i went to him and said yabna rasulillah 
who do I follow after you? And he said, al kadim my son Musa, alayhi salam. And I followed him and remained his supporter and his Shia to his last. And before he left Iraq, I went to him and I said, Ibn Rasulullah, I am fearful that you are being called to Iraq. Tell me, who do I follow after you in case you don't come back? And your father said, I must follow. A sadiq said, you must, I, I must follow al kadim alayhi salam. And I went to, so now I've come to you before you go to Iraq. I am fearful. That's right. It was, it was al kadim that he was talking to. I am fearful that when you go to Iraq, whether you will come back or not. And the Imam alayhi salam says, don't worry. After me, my successor is my, this son who was there, Ali, follow him, for he is my true successor. And the Imam alayhi salam said this to various people at various, at various times. Well, Ali ibn Yaqti, I quote him and I specifically choose his example because last year, you remember, we discussed Ali ibn Yaqti. How he was the minister in the, in the court of Harun, Lanatullah alayhi. And how he sent presents to the Imam, which the Imam sent back to him, saying, Harun, you, Ali, you will need them. And indeed, he needed them. When, when, when people went to Harun and said, Ali ibn Yaqteen is, is a Rafzi, he's, you keeping him as a minister, that gift you gave him, he sent to, the, to his Imam al kadhim alayhi salam. Harun calls him and says, Ali, where is that present? He says, it's in my house. I've kept it in a locker, perfumed. And I always perfume it because it was a present from you, which I treasure. Asked to produce, he instantly produced it. And Harun said, I will never believe anybody who says anything against you. He writes a letter to Imam Qadim alayhi salam, says, how do I make my wudu? He was told to make wudu as people of Ahl al-Sunnah make it. He was surprised, but he followed. That was the test. He was surprised, but he followed what the Imam said without a question. Made wudu that way. Again, when such complaints were made against, the, against Ali ibn Yaqteen and Harun tested him to watch how he made his wudu, found him making wudu. That Ali ibn Yaqteen is the one I'm talking about. He went to Imam Qadim alayhi salam. And in one of the sittings, Imam Qadim alayhi salam turns around to him and says, This, my son Ali, is, is indeed my testamentary executor. He is my executor after me. And he is the person who, whose word is my word. And Ali ibn Yaqteen found the answer. He knew therefore that if a person is appointed as a testamentary executor of an imam, he must be an imam. Because only an imam can be appointed an executor uh, testamentarily of an imam. And we discussed this with as sadiq alayhi salam in respect of his will in which he appointed even Mansur as one of the executors, quite tactfully, quite for political reasons. But indeed, al kadhib alayhi salam was mentioned as one of the persons, and he turned out eventually to be the sole testamentary executor of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. So he understood, according to that hadith, Ali ibn Yaqteen mentions this in another sitting in which, according to Al-Mufid alayhi rahmah, Hisham, Bin, bin Hakam was sitting there. According to As-Sudduq, uh, 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 it, it was Hisham bin Sal Salim who was sitting there. But whoever was the companion, and Ali ibn Yaqteen mentioned this, he, 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 he puts his two hands on the, on the head and says, Inna lillah, the Imam telling you these words means he is to part from us and he has already appointed his successor. Ali alayhi salam then is his successor. We need to follow after him. Numerous examples, Ibn, Ibn Qabusi goes to him and says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, whom do we follow after you? And he turns around and says, this my son Ali, who was sitting there, is a person who has examined the, 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 the Jafar with me, the Jafar we discussed earlier on. He is a person who has examined Jafar after me. And he says, Oh, Yabna Qabusi, no person can examine that Jafar unless he either is a Nabi or a Wasi of a Nabi. In other words, he meant it very clearly that, that he is indeed a Wasi, one of the twelve Ausiya of the Holy Prophet. In other words, a true successor of al kadhim alayhi salam. And he got that message, he got that message very clearly.
indeed a, 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 a telling example <coughs> on this subject is of Ziyad, Ziyad bin Marwan al-Qindi. And I hope I'll come back to him later in the evening. I only mention this so that you, you recall him at that time. He went to the, to, to the Imam salam and asked him specifically, who is the person we should follow after him? He was one of the wakils of the seventh Imam salam and accumulated funds, accepted khums, had the ijazah to accept khums and pass on to al kadhim salam. He turns around to him and says, who do we follow after you? And the seventh Imam alayhi salam, and you can see that in each of these examples, the Imam took care to call Imam Radha alayhi salam, or he was there and identified him. One, one is reminded of the Holy Prophet lifting up Imam Ali alayhi salam when he appointed Imam Ali as his successor, saying, Man kuntu mawla'u fahada aliyun mawla. This Ali is, 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 will be mawla after me of whomsoever I am Mawla. And one can see that Sunnah followed so succinctly and with such precision. The Imam salam says, this Ali who is here will be, will be my successor indeed. And then says things, says things to, to, to Ziyad bin Marwan which he does not say to others. He says, <coughs> which are implicit, but the Imam makes them express. Says his word, O oh Ziyad, is my word. His writings, are my writings, his pronouncements are my pronouncements, and whenever he says anything, that thing that he says is the truth. And I ask you to remember those words. He telling Marwan that whatever a Rida alayhi salam says is the truth. Well, <coughs> that that was done. But the uh, the other example that that we know that comes from Makhzumi. He says the Imam alayhi salam called a group of us, the Bukala and, 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 and his shears, and told them in express words, unasked this time, unasked. He called them and said, I want you to know, so that after me you do not go astray, that the one who will succeed me as the Imam alayhi salam is my this son Ali. And know that he will be the right person and the only person to succeed me after me. Something that he did quite deliberately, quite deliberately to ensure that people behind him, after him, don't, don't go astray. And, he, and, 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 that kept, and that kept repeating all the time. Dawood bin Suleiman goes to him, goes to him at a time when, when the Imam al-Islam was about to be, to be taken to Iraq. Indeed, people had already, Harun and Rashid's people had already come to Medina to take him. And the Imam alayhi salam had just visited the grave of the Holy Prophet. Dawood bin Sulaiman comes to know this, rushes to the Imam alayhi salam and says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I am so worried. I am terrified that you are being called. I don't know what Harun will do to, will do to you. But you can see how, how anxious the Shias of the time were about the plight of the Imam alayhi salam. And the Imam alayhi salam says, don't worry, no evil will come to me soon. Well, he was to be in prison for so many years as we discussed last year. He says, what is worrying you now? He says, what is worrying me personally is, whom do I follow after you? Yabna Rasulillah, save me from the fire of hell and tell me who your successor is. That is how the Shias saw the situation. It was so awful as it is today that not following the true Imam became so easy. It was so easy to be moved away from the true Imam. And he was saying to the Imam salam, that I know and I'm grateful to him that that message reaches us that not following the true Imam can mean we leave ourselves to go to hell. So salvation lies in knowing the true Imam and following him. And the Imam salam says, follow my son Ali. He will be your true guide. And Imam was with, with the seventh Imam alayhi salam at that time. But a very interesting example comes from, from a person who visits the, the, the Imam alayhi salam, Da'ud bin Zurb, and he goes to the Imam alayhi salam with khums. The Imam alayhi salam accepts part of the khums and gives him a receipt, gives him back the other half. So he says, Yabna Rasulillah, May Allah help me. Why are you returning the other half? 
Is the other half not worthy of acceptance? Because even today, the homes that we pay, the 12th Imam salam, only accepts that homes from us, which comes from halal money, money earned lawfully. Money not earned lawfully is subject to, 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 to various considerations and is not easily acceptable by the Imam salam, save in certain exceptional circumstances. Well, <coughs> so he turns around and says, why are you returning this? You, you worry me. And the Imam salam, says, don't worry. A time will come after me when the person who is entitled to receive this money will ask for this money from you and know that that is the person who is my true successor. There were only two people then. There were only two people then and hence what a, what a clear example I can give you of the proof of Imam of the 8th Imam alayhi salam. He says, Ibn Zurb says that I continue to live. I then got the information that the Imam alayhi salam has been martyred in Baghdad. And of course I grieved that and waited to hear from the true successor. I was in no hurry as other people were to find, to find out who the true successor was. And soon I received a letter from a Rida alayhi salam saying the person who is coming with this letter is my messenger. Give him that part of the khums which you gave to my father and my father asked you to keep it until his true successor demands it. One imam knowing exactly what another imam had said in his absence and fulfills the word of the previous imam. This is what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said that each one of us is the qayim. It is just that one of us fulfills what the other one was doing and the twelfth of us will fulfill all that we are doing. And that we do not rise today to fight is something that he will fulfill when he will come and he will rise not only in his name but in the name of us all. And we, will, we are all al qaim except that that which we do not fulfill of that requirement will be fulfilled by him. But here is an example, a practical example in which the Imam, the living Imam alayhi salam fulfills that that the previous Imam said, he said, he, my true successor will demand it. And, and Ibn Zurub said, I knew exactly who the true Imam alayhi salam was because except for Allah, there was no third person who knew of the conversation between al Kadim and me. And I was sure that that money is now going to the right person, truly entitled to receive khums and that he, was the, he is the true hujjah of Allah on, on this earth. Indeed, the, 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 the next example that, that we have that I wish to cite to you comes from Yazid bin Sulayt. Yazid bin Sulayt says that he went to Ar-Ridha alayhi salam and Ar-Ridha alayhi salam turns around to him and says, this Ali is my successor and whosoever and whosoever does not follow him as my successor has not followed the true Imam. And his word is indeed finally the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his is an appointment that comes from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him himself. But with Muhammad bin Sidan, the matter went much further, much further. He turns to Muhammad bin Sinan when Muhammad bin Sidan and his group of friends go to him. And this is perhaps the peak of the appointment of ar rida alayhi salam. And this is why I wanted to, not to miss putting this across to you. <coughs> he goes to the to al kadim alayhi salam and says, Who do we follow after you? Because me and all our, my, these companions are worried about you. The Imam alayhi salam says, This my son Ali alayhi salam is my true successor. <coughs> is my true successor. He is Ali like the first Ali. He is the fourth Ali. He is the third Ali. The first was Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam The second was as sajjad alayhi salam. He is the third. But he combines their qualities. He has the knowledge, the piety, the, the, the excellence, the fadila of, of, of the first Ali. He has the endurance, 
he will also have tribulations on him as the, the, as the, as the second Ali alayhi salam had. And he will bear them with the same forbearance and the same endurance as a sajjad alayhi salam did. And he will have the qualities of worship that a sajjad alayhi salam had. He will combine as Ali the third, he will combine the qualities of Ali the first and Ali the second. And I give him my kunia. He said that to Ali ibn Yaqteen also. That I give my kunia Abu al-Hasan to him. He becomes the fourth Abu al-Hasan, the third Ali. He's, the Imam alayhi salam tells him he has got all those qualities that, that, that the, the first two Ali, Ali's had. And Al-Kadhim alayhi salam goes further to say that his appointment after me as I make it now to you as I acquaint you now of his, of his true successorship, is in exactly the same line as the appointment of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. <laughs> Can you imagine the status of this appointment? This is why we say that on the, on the appointment of every Imam alayhi salam, there is a new Ghadir Yaqum. There is a revival of that Ghadir every time an Imam alayhi salam is appointed. He says he is in the same status as was the status of the appointment of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam by the Holy Prophet. And then goes to say, O oh Muhammad, careful, because he who does not accept my son Ali as a true successor of mine is like one who did not, who did not accept Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as a true successor of, of the Holy Prophet. In other words, if being a Shia is to accept Imam Ali alayhi salam, then being a Shia is likewise necessary to accept a Rida alayhi salam. He, put, he puts him at par with the first Imam alayhi salam. And what wonder? What wonder? Nothing to shake us at all. Isn't it the Holy Prophet alayhi, peace be upon him, himself who said, Awwaluna Muhammad, Awsatuna Muhammad, Akhiruna Muhammad, Kulluna Muhammad. <laughs> they all fall in the, at the same level, they stand on the same pedestal. But the important point is, and this is a point that is so serious vis-a-vis -vis the Ismailiya and the Boras that we discussed last year, the Ismailiyas who then split with the Arafanis and the Boras. It's such an important vital point that uh, al kadhim alayhi salam was making that he who does not accept him as mitre successor is as like that, is like that person who does not accept uh, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib as the immediate true successor to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. And indeed, the Holy Prophet talked of a Ridha alayhi salam again and again. <coughs> The, the credentials <coughs> of Imam Rada alayhi salam are mentioned by Khomeini in his in in in, in, uh, in, 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 in Sabbag al Maliki in his uh, Fusul al Muhimma, volume two, page one hundred and eighty-eight. He mentions them again in, in, in another context, a few pages on. Yanabi ul Bawadda mentions his, his, his birth and his, his appointment of, uh, of the Imama. But coming to the Holy Prophet, and this is vital, this is vital, because Ahl al Sunnah wal Jama'ah turn around and say to us, Where is your proof that these are your Imams? This is all concocted. We go back to them and say, It is not only our Imams, it is not only the seventh Imam alayhi salam who appointed the eighth. And this is a vital point because the Ismailis can turn around and say, we don't believe in the seventh Imam. Enough for your purposes. This is why I gave you all those instances. May not be enough for, a, for, a, for an Agha Khani. May not be enough for a Bari. But for them, the Hadith of the Holy Prophet must always be enough. And that Hadith, I will not cite from our sources. I will discuss our sources on, on Wednesday night. But for purposes of tonight, Indeed, indeed, Hamwini in his in his in in, in, in his book, Farai the Simtain, in volume two at page hundred and eighty eight, sets out this hadith in which the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet says that soon after me, they will be buried in Khurasan, in a distant land in Khurasan, bid'atum minni, 
This is how he describes Abu Ridha alayhi salam. There isn't another person buried in Khurasan who any of them can turn around and say that the Holy Prophet was referring to him. And the Holy Prophet says, Satadfun fi Khurasan bid'atum minni. Soon there will be the scene to start the, the, the verb there indicates soon. Soon a, a person from my progeny will be buried in Khurasan. And whoever makes ziyara of him, man yazuruhu, whosoever makes the ziyara visits him in, in, in Khurasan will be saved from the... W- w- Allah will make wajib on him. فَأَوْجَبَ لَهُ 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 اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will make wajib for him that he should go to Jannah. And Allah will make it haram for the fire of hell to touch him. That is the fadilah of Imam Rama as set out by the Holy Prophet as contained in this leading Sunnite work. But the point I want to make tonight is that a river alayhi salam is described by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him himself, as bid'atum minni. You remember that hadith in which the Holy Prophet says, Fatima tu bid'atum minni. That my daughter Fatima is part of me. So you can see at what level Imam Rada alayhi salam is now being elevated. The Prophet says, my daughter is part of me, says my Rida, eighth successor to me, is part of me. Bid'atum minni. Indeed. He sets out that another hadith of the Holy Prophet in the same volume at page 190 in 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 Faraidu Simtain. Yanabiul Mawadda also sets out both of these hadiths. In the second hadith, uh, Humaini says that the Holy Prophet and sets out his source. Says the Holy Prophet says he who has a grief, something troubling him, and he cannot find a solution, let him visit Bidatum Minni in Khurasan. Let him visit part of me who will be buried in Khurasan. And whosoever will visit him and, and, and pray to Allah at the graveside of my that grandson, that his grief be over. Whether that grief is for the matter of this world or of the next world, Allah will ensure that that grief is, 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 is taken away from him and he is relieved of it altogether. So you can see that these are hadiths coming from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him himself, in respect of al rida alayhi salam and the and the and the position and appointment of al rida alayhi salam from the lips of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Indeed, this is why when al rida alayhi salam was called upon to leave uh, to leave Medina and proceed to to Marwa, his greatest sorrow was to leave to leave the, the, the grave of uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny. Indeed, indeed, Abu Sal says that the picture you had when Ar-Ridha alayhi salam left Medina was so similar to the picture that there was when al Hussein alayhi salam left Medina. Just like, just like his grandfather, he would go to the grave of the Holy Prophet and having been to the grave of the Holy Prophet, would turn around to, to the Holy Prophet and say, Ya Rasulullah, it is hard for me to leave your grave. My, my heart aches and pains that I should be called upon to leave your grave and go away from, and go away from you. And you will find that every Imam suffered from this. Every Imam suffered from this when indeed the fourth Imam alayhi salam was asked by Yazid, what do you want from me? He said, allow me to go back to the graveside of my grandfather. As-Sadiq alayhi salam called by Mansur and he's told, tell me one thing you want me to do for you. This was in Baghdad and Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, allow me to go back to the graveside of the Holy Prophet. That graveside was so important. Indeed, of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, it is said that about a dozen times he went to the grave of, of the Holy Prophet saying, Oh my grandfather, I am now obliged to leave your graveside. I am not able to do so. But my last salam to you and goes. And yet he comes back when we are in Medina. That is what happens to us. We are not able to leave easily the graveside of the Holy Prophet. But truly, when we are, we are the great side of Ibn Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu It is even more difficult for us to leave that, be it, be it in, the, in, in, in the haram of 
of the Holy Prophet. Bijin Baki. When we when we conceive of Bibi Fatima to Zara we are not able to part from her graveside. How did Hussein alayhi salam part from the graveside of the mother? He comes to, to the graveside of the mother and says, Mother, I can't part from your graveside. I must remain with you because I, it is just not possible for me to leave and yet the enemies are, are surrounding me in this way. Mother, how do I solve this problem? And Fatima to Zahra salam, always there to solve the problems of us all, in particular of our son Hussein alayhi salam, turns around and a voice is heard by the Imam. Bibi Fatima says, Hussein, don't worry, you are not leaving me as you move away, as you leave Karbala. I will be coming with you all the way, all the way you will see me with you. And I will keep you company to your last hour. Indeed, even on the night of Ashura, indeed, even on that night when when when, when Da'afal says the Imam alayhi salam on the, in the plain of Karbala and goes to to be with him, he sees a lady there, turns to the Imam alayhi salam and says, Oh grandson of the Prophet, I see a veiled lady on this plane in Karbala now. The Imam alayhi salam says, Now Fal, that is my mother Fatima. She is already here. Now Fal says, Why is she here? He, the Imam alayhi salam says, just as you saw me clearing the land where my companions will fall. My mother is clearing the pebbles on that piece of ground on which I will fall the fall and she will receive me as I descend onto the ground on that day of Allah. <laughs> إلا لله وإلا إليه راجعون رحم الله من يكر الفاتحة